Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Gates ramp deck updated with Primeval Titan, which got recently introduced in the Historic Anthology expansion, a 6-mana six 6-6 six six trampling giant that gets to find two lands when it enters a battlefield or when it attacks, so it's not limited to finding basic lands, so it can even find our Baldur's Gate, which can generate a bunch more mana if we have gates out. We can find our Maze's End, which is a nice alternate win condition if we have 10 gates with different names in play after activating Maze's and putting a gate in play, we can just win the game. So Primeval Titan can basically be an alternate win condition by finding our Maze's End. And then we also have Plans of Harmony, which can help us gain 3 life when it enters if we have 2 or more gates in play, so that can also be very helpful when facing the more aggressive decks in the format. So Primeval Titan has a ton of utility lands to choose from, even some of our gates have activated abilities to seek additional non-land cards, so that can also be helpful if we're just looking for more action. So these are all one-offs as well. And then the rest of our gates, we have four Izzet Guild Gate, four Gruul Guild Gate, and four Simic Guild Gate, since all the spells in this deck that we're trying to cast are blue, red, or green, so that's the main focus. And then we've got some additional one-off gates that we can search up to help win the game with Mesa's End, but also just to have a critical mass of gates to get some of our synergies going, such as Guild Summit, which when it enters the battlefield we can tap any number of untapped gates we control to draw that many cards, and whenever a gate enters we also draw a card. It's also excellent with Primeval Titan, finding two gates and drawing two cards in the process potentially can potentially be punished by an Orcish Bowmasters, which of course is all the rage right now in the format, so that's potentially a problem. But we also have Gates Ablaze, which can potentially clean it up, dealing X damage to each creature, where X is the number of gates we control, so this is our main tool to beat opposing creature decks in the format. Then we also have two copies of Gatebreaker Ram, getting plus one plus one for each gate we control, as well as Vigilance and Trample, so an excellent threat that helps us play offense and defense, and it will always survive our own gates ablaze. And then we also have four copies of Circuitous Root, which helps us ramp towards Primeval Titan by finding two gates and put them on the battlefield tapped. So this can also find our Baldur's Gate, which is actually a gate, although it won't be able to find our Mesa's End, but can still use Primeval Titan to do that, or we might eventually draw into it with our Guild Summit. And then the rest of our deck is more mana acceleration, ways to put additional lands in play, since we are playing 30 lands total, so that's half of our deck. We've got our Boreal Gracer, which will often be able to play on turn 2 after playing a tapped gate on turn 1, so that can also put an extra land in play, can help us chum block, and later in the game if we're going off with Guild Summit, it's still a useful way to put an extra land in play to keep going. And then we also have four copies of Explorer to draw cards and play an additional land, and four copies of Growth Spiral. And yeah, that pretty much sums up our entire deck. The goal is simple, ramp, draw some cards, try to survive aggro decks, and eventually get our Primeval Titan going to find our Mesa Sand, which will likely win us the game. And it can also win the game through an opposing one ring, so that's the advantage of not relying on combat damage to win the game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn 2 we can Growth Spiral and hopefully pick up more gates. Half of our deck is land, so we're pretty likely to find a few more. And then Guild Summit gives us the card draw to hit more land drops and eventually get to our Primeval Titan. At least that's the hope. Got a bit of removal with Gates Ablaze. Opponent with an Abundant Harvest, so it could be a Junt deck as we see Fable which potentially replaced Crucius for some decks. I'm gonna grow Spiral main phase to play around Orcish Bowmasters, hitting us for one more. And we picked up Roots, so that's gonna be great once we get to deploy it. And we could do so already here. Yeah, don't mind it, as opposed to playing Guild Summit first. You can always tap some gates later with Guild Summit. Definitely get Baldur's Gates, and then... Get one of my one-off gates who are less likely to draw naturally. Let's go with Demir. So we could see a Fable of the Mirror Breaker on three. That's fine. So Baldur's Gate doesn't make any additional mana yet, but that's okay. Just play Primeval Titan. Get two more gates. 
can get some of that half activated abilities. Possible Primeval Titan gets removed and I was better off getting a Maze's End, but with Guild Summit as card draw I'm not too worried. So now we have more gates in play, so Baldur's Gate makes more mana. Opponent does have a go for the throat, unfortunately. So the Shaman gets to attack and make a treasure. I guess if they also have a discard spell here, that could be bad. Can always activate our uh, gates here to seek a non-land card. It's gonna be a main phase Bowmasters, good at punishing Guild Summit. And a thought sees. Okay. So they might want to take Gates Ablaze now, which can answer their board. Was well, probably better to Thought Seize first and then play Bowmasters. Opponent does take the Guild Summit after all. Okay, found another one. That's convenient. So what's our sequencing? We want a Gates Ablaze. So let's say we activate Baldur's Gates. Making a bunch of green mana. Then I can play Gates Ablaze. Play Guild Summit, tapping some gates. That seems fine. So if I tap one gate, I can still play Gatebreaker Ram. That might be worth it here. So we can apply a bit more pressure. Okay, opponent can get back Thought Seize here. Or Abundant Harvest. They know we have an Explorer in hand, not the most threatening card. So their opponent goes for Abundant Harvest. And finds a One Ring. Okay. Picked up a Plaza of Harmony, so I can play that to help pay for Guild Summit, so we keep more gates untapped, basically. I guess it's fine to tap Baldur's Gate at this point as well. So we'll make blue. Play Guild Summit. And then tap a bunch of gates while the coast is clear. Probably doesn't hurt to leave a little bit of extra mana untapped here, in case we'll need it. So we can explore and growth spiral here. And then I guess explore again. And get a nice attack in. So we're still missing our Maze's End, but uh, between double Guild Summit, we're gonna find a lot of cards. So we'll eventually get to it. Shieldred can punish the card draw from Guild Summit. Go for the Throat Answers Gatebreaker Rain. But nothing for Reflection to copy, so it's just gonna attack for two here. Take our Natural Draw step. So we can start with Gruul Guild Gates, draw two. Finding another Guild Summit, not exactly what we need here. Don't want to tap Baldur's Gate yet if I can help it. Play Roots, get two more gates. So draw four, lose eight life. Hoping to find the Gates Ablaze. There's our Maze's End, but won't be able to activate it yet this turn. So we're in a bit of trouble. I can explore, draw, play Maze's End, but then I'll be unable to actually use it. So if I play Grazer, put another gate in play, we get two more draw steps down to one. That's the most we can draw here. If 
find a ram. And a primeval titan. Okay, titan can get another plaza of harmony, so that can keep me alive. And I'll get another Mesa's End, which is not a gate. Play Gatebreaker. And, uh, yeah. That's it for now. Don't want to explore, because then I die to Shieldred next turn. So we're technically not that on board. And next turn I can win with Mesa's End. Opponent can get back a 3-drop, that doesn't matter. Go for the throat on Gatebreaker Ram, so we are down to two blockers, although if they attack all out, we can actually trade for Shieldred, so we're not dead on board yet. But yeah, now we go to upkeep, Shieldred trigger on the stack, and in response we can even activate Mesa's End. And I don't even have to get a gate, since I think we already have 10 in play, but let's double check here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10. So yeah, if you decline it should still work and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So beat the newest iteration of Junt, which is one of the best decks in the format. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Turn to Grazer, Guild Summit for card draw, Root for ramp. And then hope to find our Primeval Titan at some point. Let's see what we're up against. Blue black with turn one rune crab, a mill deck. Okay, that is kind of scary since it could end up milling all our uh, wing conditions like Maze's End. Our deck also tends to draw a lot of cards, so we're sort of helping the opponent there. Wouldn't be able to root next turn, but we can play Guild Summit. And then now founding to cast a cut down on Grazer, that's fine. Okay, now we can actually root, get our Baldur's Gate before the opponent mills it. Can get Maze's End since that's not a gate. But we can get something else that can provide a bit of value perhaps. One Titan's gone. And getting 10 different gates is also going to be tricky when our opponent's milling us. So our best avenue to victory might be a Gatebreaker Ram, although I'm sure our opponent's got that covered as well. So yeah, the mill matchup is possibly our worst case scenario here. But I'm interested to see how it pans out. If we were playing best of three, I might have a, a Gaia's Blessing in the sideboard for this matchup. Although Cling to Dust, potentially an answer to that as well. Okay, so play Guild Summits and then... Yeah, let's just time the Baldur's Gates so I can still grow Spiral here. Alright, and then we can do that in the opponent's turn to maybe play around Spell Pierce. And a Maze's End, that's excellent. So we'll put that in play. Although again, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough gates left to win the game. I do have more than 10 differently named gates in the deck. But we'll still uh, need to get to 10. Rakdos Guild Gates, the Red gates milled already. Those are unique. And now Atasha Sidious Laughter leaves us with 16 cards in library. So yeah, that's gonna make it really difficult now. Yeah, I guess I can activate Mazes and have a look if there's any win conditions remaining. And then we can replay Mazes and Yeah, so we have four differently named gates. Double Gatebreaker Ram might still get there in time. So that's probably our most realistic win condition here. We get to draw. There's a Ram. So let's say we play Gruel Guild Gate draw before tapping Baldur's Gate. And then I could still grow Spiral. Question is if I even want to draw here. 
but if I draw another Gatebreaker aim, I can still play it, so that's probably worth it. Alright, so now Explorer doesn't let me cast a Gatebreaker aim. And again, we're not going to have 10 gates to win with Mesa's End, so I think we just pass it back. And then hope to get there over the course of three turns with a ram, maybe two turns if we put more gates in play, but we're probably going to mill before then. So mill for three, eight cards left. And I'm sure they've got another hideous laughter here. Rivulet mill for four, leaves us with four cards remaining. Our last ram's gone, and founding mill for four again. Alright, GG's. Yeah, this is just going to be a tough matchup no matter what. But yeah, if you're looking for some sideboard tech, Gaia's Blessing to shuffle your library back, could do it. If we actually had 10 gates in play, we could still win an upkeep by activating Mesa's End. But uh, alas, got to see the sweet new mill animation at least that they've recently implemented. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is a tad slow to get going, but... On the play with a turn to explore, I'm gonna give it a try. So we can guild gate on one, I could plaza on two to explore, or we can wait to gain the life off of it. Yeah, now I can just play turn three ram instead, which will be a good distraction, especially against the red deck, which might struggle to take it out. Okay, opponent goblins. So play Gatebreaker Ram, could also play Baldur's Gate for now, which increases our gate count. Which will make Ram a little larger here. 5-5, five, five, Vigilance Trample. Pretty good against other creature decks. Marauder, when it hits us, can provide some card advantage. So now our opponent may be planning to ramp out Muxus. Thanks to the Prospector, they could get there next turn already. If it weren't for the Gates Ablaze our partner in crime here. So let's ablaze, and then we can still get in there with a ram. Yeah, this is a very powerful one-two punch against any creature strategy, and our opponent's seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Nothing particularly exciting. But we've got our teamer colors sorted, and then some early acceleration, eventually Maze's End can be our win condition. Prototype points towards a potential Paradox Engine combo deck. Get to play Grazer, could even play Gross Spiral here, but let's see if we go Plaza, play Gross Spiral. Yeah, it seems better to just Grazer. Keep the untapped land for Root. Play a tapped Maze's End. And then next turn Plaza will be untapped, so we can root, get Baldur's Gate. And then I'll get a gate with an activated ability here, so we can potentially find a Primeval Titan. Mox Amber can tap for mana with the prototype. And there's a one ring. We can beat a one ring through Maze's End, potentially. But of course a card draw can help the opponent out. Guild Summit was an excellent draw. A few ways we can play this. I don't think we tap Baldur's Gate yet since it doesn't make extra mana. So let's just play Guild Summit. And then... Do I want to tap any gates as a question? I guess I could tap one gate and then still play Growth Spiral. So sure, we'll tap Baldur's Gate anyway, since I need both blue and green to play Gross Parallel. There's prime time, okay. And then we don't have an Izzet Guild Gates in play yet. Get to draw. And a Gates Ablaze. So we're ramping very nicely, but if our opponent's got a Paradox Engine, we could just die here. And there's Paradox Engine. Do they have a zero mana artifact or one drop? I guess will work. Emery. Emery still has summoning sickness at least. Opponent running Atraxa as well. 
But yeah, now between Paradox Engine and the One Ring, if they can find more cheap spells, they can keep drawing and untapping everything. And then at some point, they'll find a way to kill us with Karn getting Aetherflux Reservoir out of the sideboard. So yeah, this is one of the bad matchups for the Gates deck for sure. It's a combo deck that's faster than us at winning the game. And uh, there's not a whole lot we can do to interact with it. And Gates a blaze for creatures, but as you could see here, we didn't have enough time to cast it. So the One Ring plus Paradox Engine is just a little too strong. And our opponent's not going to fizzle out at this point. So yeah, the uh, Paradox Engine Ring deck, one of the better decks in the format. You can try to punish it with Orcish Bowmasters, which is what the Black Midrange decks are trying to do with a Bowmaster in play. They can draw all the cards they want, unless they just played the one ring for turn. But uh, yeah, even though we had a pretty nice opening with Grazer into Roots, into potential Primeval Titan, it's not going to matter. So that's going to keep the Gates deck from being truly competitive on the rank ladder. Still a fun casual deck, of course. But opponent gets a Reservoir. Kinon increasing their mana output. And Reservoir plus a couple spells should end the game here. Opponent up to 26. Cast an Emery. Up to 36. So two more spells will do it. And they can always activate the One Ring if they'd like, but... The game ended pretty much when they cast Paradox Engine and another spell to untap everything. GG's. Activate Reservoir, and that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing red for Gates Ablaze. But I think we can still try it. Pretty likely to find a red source in the next couple draw steps between drawing naturally and explore. And then we're off to the races. So we can explore, put in another gate, and I guess we can diversify our gates here in case we end up winning with Maze's End. Put on an elf deck with turn to War Masters, so Gates Ablaze is going to be excellent if we get to cast it. So let's spiral. And then we can explore again here if we'd like. Alright, so get to play Primeval Titan next turn, which will find our red. And then Gates of Blazes online. Currently have four gates in play, so if we can keep it at five gates so we don't kill our own Primeval Titan with Gates of Blaze, that would be better. So I'll just get a Maze's End, which is not a gate, and something else. And that needs to be a red gate, of course. So I'm liking my chances. So Maze's End and... a red gate. And then next turn we can ablaze, and then attack, get more gates. Love to see the main phase collected company. Our opponent could threaten lethal next turn with a Shepherd, so good thing that's not going to happen. Attack, and yeah, her opponent knows the writings on the wall here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Solid Hand. We've got some of the signature cards here between Gates of Blaze and Guild Summits. Plaza lets us play something on turn 3. And then we could root to keep ramping. Opponent with what looks like a Charbelcher combo deck. So that's going to be a tough matchup. Our opponent can potentially combo kill us as early as turn 3 here with a Skirk Prospector for extra mana. So I could Gates Ablaze just to kill Prospector to try and delay them by turn. I think I need to develop my mana first to have a chance this game. So let's just grow Spiral and play some more tapped gates. Play 
play a Grazer. So next turn we could root and get Baldur's Gate. If our opponent's got the uh, best possible draw, they could already kill us here with an Iron Crank feat into Charbelcher Activate. Don't have any real interaction for the Charbelcher. Barbarian can also make two, so Gates of Blaze will be effective at least. And I will be forced to cast it now. Is this a Pact of Negation? But then they don't have the blue to pay for Pact. Follow Could Awakening instead, fair enough. So they get to refresh their hand. They kept two, so they must have Charbeltra or Iron Crank Feet in hand already. And if they just play Charbeltra activated next turn, there's not much I can do about it. Alright, it's gonna be a tapped Seagate Restoration. Okay, so we can root. Get Baldur's Gate and some activated ability land. And then next turn we can draw a few cards with Guild Summits. Still gonna take us a while to actually close out the game. So our opponent's got all the time in the world to set up their combo. And there's Iron Crank Feet into Charbelcher, no doubt. Yep. Alright, GG's. And 47 damage. We would not have survived even with a couple more plazas. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand is lacking blue mana, but with a root we can eventually find it. Still feels a little slow for historic standards. So can I keep... I think I still have to, just gotta hope to find a Grazer or Explore early. And then Root into Titans, not bad. Okay, Plaza still doesn't make blue mana, but gains us some life, and another untapped land doesn't hurt. So, play Gatebreaker Ram, and hope they can counter Root because we need it for mana fixing. Opponent a Bant deck with a Deputy of Detention, that's fine, so opponent a Flicker deck. So we definitely have a chance this game. Seems like a winnable matchup. Opponent's deck is not particularly fast, and I don't think they interact with our lands in any way. So get our blue mana sorted. Next turn we could already play Primeval Titan. Guild Summit might get answered by Skyclave Apparition, so I'm not sure if that's gonna stick around for long. Opponent actually missed with Collected Company, so if we don't win this game, then our deck's just bad. And then next turn, hope to attack with it. But in the meantime, I can get Maze's End and another gate with an activated ability. And then we can play Guild Summit before attacking, so Primeval Titan draws two more. But I imagine they'll have some other answer here. Elish Norn to stop creatures from triggering when they enter, but when they attack they'll still trigger. Uh, let's see here, if a permanent entering... I guess it also stops Guild Summit from drawing cards. So that's too bad. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. Primeval Titan can attack, find two more gates, and then we're pretty close to just winning with Maze's End. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got a bit of ramp, some interaction, and then more card draw. And then a nice mix of lands as well. Start with a Simic Guild Gate, so if we draw a Grazer we can cast it turn two. If we draw Explore, we can also cast it of Baldur's Gate, being untapped. And if we draw Forest, we can Grow Spiral. Opponent with a Radiant Fountain, that's bad news, means likely a Colorless Artifact combo deck. And those tend to be faster than whatever we're doing. So not loving my chances this game. Power Stone Shard, and a Guardian Idol. 
So our opponents are ramping very nicely. I could play a Guild Summit, which is maybe the best I can do. Just to start drawing towards more ramp spells. But our opponent could technically already win the game here if they've got the right cards in hand. Paradox Engine plus land, play a 2-mana artifact, untap everything, the one ring, start drawing. And that could just uh, end the game. It's going to be a Mystic Forge, also very good. Play spells off the top of the deck. So they're just missing a uh, Paradox Engine, pretty much. Okay, let us draw. Can't actually double Gross Peril here, since Baldur's Gate doesn't make colored mana. Does that mean I want to play another Guild Summit first? I think I gotta start ramping. And then I'll just put a tapped gate into play since Plaza doesn't let me cast anything. Make sure we diversify the names of the gates here. So far one of each, five gates total. Root isn't bad. So next turn Baldur's Gate does actually generate a bit of extra mana. Can maybe Root and Gross Spiral, and then we're getting close to a win with Maze's End. But we'll see what our opponent can come up with here. Karn, yep, that can get the One Ring, or a Paradox Engine. So there's still one mana short of casting Engine. But next turn they can likely combo off. So play a Gate first, then activate Baldur's Gate. Can maybe draw into an Arboreal Grazer, which can also put something else in play. Explore I can still cast if I put in Plants of Harmony with Gross Spiral. And then I can play Maze's End. I guess we can even grow Spiral, which might be harder to cast next turn. Okay, so how many gates do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, next turn I could potentially win with Mesa's End, but we may not get another turn. Opponent's got the Paradox Engine and a Mystic Forge in play already. Karn can get the One Ring. So I think that's probably lights out, unless their opponent doesn't have the one ring in the sideboard to get. My my Forsaken Monuments, okay. Just makes more mana. Does that mean they have a one ring in hand? Opponent cast Paradox Engine. So now our opponent's going off. Just gotta hope they have multiple lands on top of the deck that they have to get through with Mystic Forge, so they end up fizzling out a bit. Opponent should also be in full control, so they can activate Mystic Forge in response to the untapped trigger in case there's multiple lands on top. That's one way to prevent that from happening. And now the one ring is gonna just win them the game. Yeah, another one ring Paradox Engine combo deck. It's just gonna be a turn faster than Mesa's End, which is to be expected. But yeah, next turn, assuming we get to untap, we cast Roots, get two more gates, and then activate Mesa's End to win the game. So we would have gotten there in a turn. But our opponent also didn't have the most explosive opening they could have had. No uh, Semblance Anvil to discount the artifacts, otherwise we could have died on turn 4 already. Another Paradox Engine. A very unlikely for the opponent to fizzle out now, with the one ring in play. 
but technically not impossible if they have all lands. They may not have another Karn, never mind, there it is. So you get uh, a win condition. But if Karn gets Aetherflux Reservoir, we should be dead. And there it is. Opponent up to 36, so two more spells will do it. Alright, GG's. Activate Reservoir, and that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Gates of Blaze for interaction, Root for ramp, and then we get our Titan going. So yeah, gotta hope we're up against a creature deck where Gates of Blaze is relevant. If we're facing combo, we're likely gonna be too slow without any turn 1 grazers or turn 2 explorers. Temple of Mystery, okay. Can play Guild Summit next turn into Root, which is a pretty nice sequence. Assuming it resolves, I guess. It's gonna be an undersimplify Serpon, maybe a blue-green counterspell deck here. That's gonna make it a little harder. If we actually had a Mazes End in play, that gives us a game plan that doesn't uh, rely on resolving anything, but Got to hope they run out of counter spells eventually. Okay, point on lets the root resolve. So we can get two more gates with activated abilities, which will come in handy. And then if Titan somehow resolves, we can get our mazes end. Opponent flashes in a cutthroat. Can also potentially bait out a counter with gates ablaze. Although well, opponent might have the uh, Night Pack Ambusher that they want to play here. So let's start by playing a gate. So right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 other gates. Baldur's Gate makes 5 mana. So we've got 8 total. So I can grow Spiral plus play Primeval Titan. And I guess that would leave me 1 mana since we put an extra gate in play for Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I guess that's worth a try. That resolves. I could potentially pay for a conditional counterspell next turn to resolve Primeval Titan. If they play an Ambusher end of turn, I can try to Gates Ablaze and resolve Primeval Titan. So I don't think I should tap out for Titan now. So instead we can just activate Gates to Tumble Down. Okay, picked up a Guild Summit. Do we see Ambusher? We do. That's fine. So next turn, hopefully there's no unwind to counter and untap. We can try to uh, bait out a counter on Gates Ablaze and resolve Titan, which is more important. There's also Guild Summit, which wouldn't be bad to have in play. So let's start with Guild Summits. Charm, okay, so... Can now resolve Gates Ablaze and Primeval Titan. So let's play the gate first. Can pay for Spell Pierce. And summon the ambusher, that's fine. So that's dealt with. And then now Primeval Titan get Mesa's end. And now we can win the game without needing to cast another spell. And then what other gate do we want? Some one-off. I guess one that has an activated ability perhaps. Do we have any left? We don't. 
So current gate count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different gates. So we could get there if Titan gets to attack. Okay, Titan gets to attack. Although might get unsummoned. Fading hope to bounce it. Might get countered on the way down. Although we picked up Izzet Guild Gate, so we're still getting closer. Opponents counting our gates as well here. So yeah, play Titan. And then I don't have to tap Baldur's Gate necessarily, but may as well. Another Archmage's Charm, that's fine. So I can activate some of my lands here. Another Titan, that'll do. And then upkeep, we can activate Maze's End for the win. So we don't even need to attack anymore. Opponent had another Fading Hope. Yeah, they needed a couple more counter spells to have a chance this game. But, uh... Can just play another Primeval Titan. Activate Mesa's and uh, that should be game. Opponent flashes an ambusher, that's fine. And a Celestia Guildgate can do the honors. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our historic gate stack in action, and Primeval Titan definitely had some impressive moments, finding our Maze's End to set up the alternate win condition, getting Baldur's Gate to generate a ton more mana, and even getting Plaza of Harmony to keep us alive for an extra turn. So this seems like the best home for Primeval Titan in the format, but unfortunately, like I suspected, Primeval Titan is just a little bit too slow to be a truly competitive card in the format, since so many of the combo decks can already kill you on turn 4 between the One Ring Paradox engine decks, and we saw the Charbelcher deck as well being great examples. And yeah, the Gates deck is just not going to be able to compete with those decks. On the other hand, we can potentially beat creature decks if we have a fast enough draw, or if we can cast a Gates Ablaze at the right time, and we can also stand a chance against mid-range decks, where we can usually outdraw them once we get our Primeval Titan going. So there are certainly winnable matchups out there, but I would still classify this Gates Ramp deck as a combo deck, and as such there are just more efficient and faster versions out there, so I would never recommend this as a competitive choice, but if you just enjoy casting Primeval Titan, this is one of the better homes for it. Could also try it in a Landfall build, but the problem there is that Lotus Cobra, which is probably a key part of that deck, just dies to Orcish Bowmasters, so I shied away from that build. So we might have to wait until Valakut or maybe Amulet of Vigor comes to Arena alongside the Bounce lands, and then we can give those a try alongside Azusa. But for now, I think uh, Primeval Titan is just going to remain a casual option in the format. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.